guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel, thank you for watching. So for today's makeup tutorial, I thought it was a good idea to mix this one in with a QA. and a It's been a while since I've done a sort of Q&A get ready with me. So I did put out there on my Instagram story for you guys to ask me some questions for this video. So thank you so much to everyone who did ask something. Um, I tried to answer ones that were different from previous videos that I filmed. I will link my other sort of Q&As and get to know me videos below. You guys did have some juicy questions for me. Um, so yeah, we've really jumped on in. We've delved quite deep. Um, <laughs> But I really hope that you guys enjoy watching this video and also seeing how I created this sort of really easy soft glam makeup look. It honestly is. It's really, really easy to create. So, um, yeah, so if you want to see how I create this look and also get to know me a little bit better, then please keep watching. I feel like we all just need a moment to appreciate how orange my eyebrows are. <laughs> I used a new face tanning spray last night and definitely forgot to go through my eyebrows. And underneath this light, I'm literally like, oh my god, they're so orange. Um, so if you're wondering why, that's that's why. So for primer today, I'm going to use the Fenty Beauty. This is the Pro Filter Instant Retouch Primer. I have just made sure that I put a moisturiser and also a facial oil on. I like using a face oil and a moisturiser in winter um, before putting on my makeup. I definitely feel like my skin gets a lot drier in winter. If you feel like you've got quite oily skin, you might not want to start your makeup off with an oil base. But if you do suffer with drier skin, try using sort of an oil moisturizer or a, or a facial oil before doing your makeup and see if it helps. Um, right, I'm just going to put my hair up because I feel like it's going to be in the way. So I'm just going to start off by adding some concealer to my eyelids. For this I'm going to use the Tarte Shape Tape Concealer. So this is light medium sand. Also, I do apologise if during this you can hear building work. There's some sort of shop or something being built and I honestly the builders are just 24-7 drilling and there's nothing I can do about it. So I apologise. I don't know if it's going to come up. So you might not be able to hear anything, but right now it's so loud. So I'm really hoping you can't, but we'll see. So when it came to picking the questions for today's video, I, um, I basically went with the ones that sort of kept coming up. And one of the main ones that basically came up so much was you guys asking about Joe and I and marriage and kids and, you know, getting proposed to and all that sort of stuff. So as you can see here, I'm just literally putting this on my eyelid as a base for my eyeshadow. So um, the basically, the answer is, of course, I would absolutely love to marry Joe, and it will happen um, at some point, but we're not in like a, we're not in a major rush for anything to really happen. Basically, like I'm, I'm just sort of one of those people that I'm under the sort of feeling that I know I'm gonna be with Joe, like I know that we're gonna get married, and it's going, it's inevitably gonna happen, but because of that, I'm also not in a rush for it to happen, like, Obviously, you know, it will be amazing when we do get married, but I also equally am not in a rush, if that makes sense. I think when it comes to kids, um, both Joe and I are very much in the similar sort of um, mind that we do want kids, but not for a while. I don't think, I couldn't really see myself having kids until I was sort of in my early 30s, I think. So I'm 26 now, if you guys didn't know. Um, and I just don't think that yeah, I'm just, it doesn't really feel like it's part of my life plan at the moment. I sort of spoke to my mum about it the other day and said to her, I was like, is it really weird that I don't feel like I want kids? Um, because I do, I, I genuinely am not a massively broody person. I've, I've never really, I, I don't find myself ever thinking about wanting to have kids. But I feel like it's one of those things where it's just the natural thing that happens in life. So you just, you just feel like you're going to have to have kids. I, I don't really know how to say it. Like... I know that I will have kids, especially because I know that Joe wants them, and I feel like since meeting Joe, it's made me want to have kids more because I know that Joe really wants them, and obviously I love Joe, and I would love to have a family with him because it's something that he wants. So therefore, it kind of makes me want it a little bit more. And especially they do say like when you do meet someone who you know is the one and the one that you fall in love with, it can have that effect on you, and you do think actually I really want to have a family with you. So with that being said, oh by the way, I'm just setting my eyelids here just with any sort of setting powder just so I can set that base before I go with eyeshadow. So yeah, so I just think that it will happen. I just think for both Joe and I, we've just decided that it'll happen a little bit later. I think that sort of like 31, 32 is probably when I'd like to start having kids. So the eyeshadow palette I'm gonna to use today, I'm gonna to use two, but the first one is the Tom Ford. So this is Desert Fox. It says number 29, Desert Fox. It's got some amazing colors in it. They're very sort of like neutral, goldy, brown tones. I'm gonna use this like pale color here, which actually comes out, as you guys will see, a really nice sort of like soft orange color. So I'm gonna start off with this product in my crease, and then I'm gonna take it sort of outwards to the tail end of my eyebrow. 
and then up into my eyebrow as well. I sort of focus on the crease area first and then I'll start to bring the product down, um, down sort of across my whole eyelid, but I just like to build up the crease area first. So another question that came up a lot was um, you guys sort of talking about my anxiety and I've spoken to you guys about it before in some of my other vlogs and was saying how, you know, it had gotten a lot worse towards the end of 2020 um, and how I was still sort of trying to deal with it a little bit more this year. Um, I feel like it's definitely not gone away. Um, it's, an, it's a really odd one as well because I, I, I know I've said this before but like I never thought I would be someone who would suffer with anxiety because I've always been such a confident, you know, very outgoing person. Um, and I never thought I would ever sort of suffer with anxiety. So it's it's definitely something that I think has come on from the sort of pressures of the career that I'm in. Um, I would say that I I suffer from it really, I think at the moment, my, my big sort of problem with my anxiety is I get it in the morning. So as soon as I wake up, I have this feeling, which I, feel, I always explain it to people who maybe have never had anxiety or don't really know what it is. It's almost like, you know that nervous feeling you get when you wake up in the morning and you're, you know, you're about to do something that day that, you, that makes you nervous. Whether it's like, I don't know, you're going on a date or you're going to go and play a sports game or you're doing anything that genuinely makes you nervous. It's that feeling of that sort of like sick feeling, but it's not knowing what you're nervous about. And that not knowing what you're nervous about sort of makes you feel more anxious and more nervous. It's kind of the best way I can explain it. Um, and I feel like at the moment I've really been waking up feeling like that. So um, one thing I've started doing though that I feel like has really helped me is I've actually started taking CBD. Um, Joe's really into that sort of CBD treatment and things like that. He's read up a lot about it. So in January we actually started taking CBD oil in the evening before we went to bed. And I didn't necessarily realise if it was working or not. I couldn't feel any effects of it. But I actually ran out at the end of January and haven't been taking it for the last two weeks. And every morning I'm waking up feeling anxious. Whereas during January, I didn't feel anxious at all. I honestly didn't wake up feeling anxious. So I think that that was, you know, down to the help of the CBD. So um, I've actually, weirdly enough, I just ordered some more today because I woke up this morning feeling really pretty quite anxious. Um... And so I just decided, you know, I didn't want to didn't want to wake up feeling like that anymore. So I've ordered some more. So I'll keep you guys updated. I'll let you know in my vlogs and stuff as to how it's going, how it's working. Um, just so in case there's any of you guys as well that's also suffering from anxiety, especially at this time of, you know, our lives where even if you've not suffered with it before, things like the, the way the world is at the moment um, can definitely be causing some issues that maybe weren't there before. So as you can see, I've just put the eyeshadow, basically, I've started to move it move it down, and I've sort of covered my whole lid. But as you can see, it's such a nice colour. It's really, I don't know, it's just, it's just a really nice base colour. It's not too heavy. I just honestly love this. I really think it's such a nice shade. So now I've got that shade on both of my eyelids, I'm just going to go back in with that, which I can't see, that Tarte concealer. I'm going to do a little bit of a cut crease, but not too much, just so that I can add a lighter sort of glitter shade and it'll show up a little bit better. So I feel like certain steps of my makeup I can't do while talking. I'm just going to attempt to cut this and then I will go back to answering your questions. So when I'm actually cutting the lid, I put a really small amount of concealer on and I sort of pat it out really softly. I don't like to put too much on because I want it to be a soft cut. You can also see that I haven't actually taken it all the way up to my actual crease. I'm sort of faking a smaller, a smaller crease just because I don't want the light eyeshadow all over the lid. I'm just going to grab the brush that I was using, the orange colour. I'm just going to buff out the edges of that concealer that I've just put on there. And then I'm going to use, so this is the Kat Von D, um, I think, what is it called? Edge of Reality Eyeshadow Palette. The colours in here are so nice. They're all like shimmery shades, honestly. I'm, it's just so nice. I'm going to use this one here. While I'm doing this, I will answer some more questions. I feel like this is like the ultimate multitask. It's actually quite tricky to do this and the questions. Um, but I'm hoping I'm nailing it. Okay, you guys had me howling because <laughs> one question that came up a lot was about sex life during lockdown and just sex life in general. You nosy people, honestly. Um, also, the brush I'm using here is just a little flat Morphe brush, by the way. So, honestly, I can't lie to you guys. Yes, lockdown has massively affected mine and Joe's sex life. I feel like 
it would be weird for it not to. Everyone I speak to, like, I have so many conversations with my friends about this. And I'm like, has your sex life just, like, disappeared during lockdown? And they're like, yeah, what is with that? And I keep trying to work out, like, why? But I think, in all honesty, I think it's just because... I don't know, I just... It's a weird one, I just don't feel that motivated in life in general during lockdown. Because, I mean, it's just such a bloody weird time that we're all in, isn't it? And I think that when you're just not, like, you're sort of seeing them all day, every day, and I just get into bed and I just, I don't know, honestly, it's the most bizarre thing. But to everyone who is asking me, you're not alone, I promise you, I think it's a universal thing, like, genuinely, because I've spoken to so many people, and they just say the same thing. Because, like, before that, like, and that was the other question that I kept getting asked, which is so funny, was like, you know, I've been in a long-term relationship for a while, um, how often do you and Joe have sex, like, what's normal, blah, blah, blah. And, like, before lockdown, like, we probably would have sex, like, twice a week, I would say. Um, so, it is weird, obviously, you know, lockdown has sort of affected that. But, yeah, I don't know, I think it's just, obviously, it's just a weird time for everyone, isn't it? Plus, I'm not going to lie, having a puppy in the bedroom that sleeps in her bed, but on the floor. Also, she's like a massive cock block, like, literally. So, that's the eyeshadow basically done. As you can see, it's just like a subtle sort of soft glam. It's really easy to do, honestly. I, I promise you, most of my eyeshadow looks, you, I can guarantee that you'll be able to do them because I'm not the best eyeshadow. So I like them to be simple. Um, so I'm gonna move on to eyeliner. Okay, I know I'm so late to the party here, I really am, but Inglot Gel Liner, I've just purchased. I know this has literally been around for years. Why it's taken me this long to get it, I don't know. But it has made doing winged eyeliner so much easier. If you struggle with winged eyeliner like I was, it's pro it could be the thing that you're using. So like for example, I was using a felt tip liner, which like no shade on felt tip liners, but I don't think they're very good because it's just hard to get like one really nice like seamless line. And I think that's why I was sort of, you know when you like do one and then you have to go back in and it gets thicker and it just ends up being an absolute just nightmare. Whereas this gel liner, so I've got the, so this is just the black one and then I've got the liner brush as well absolutely amazing so yes yeah, so i'm going to do a little mini winged liner I'm, I'm absolutely loving doing a thin sort of like half wing at the moment it's my favorite um sort of eyeliner so i'm going to do that obviously i can't talk while i do this i have to really compose myself and think about it so i'll come back to you guys so there we go that is what i mean by a little tiny really thin wing on the outside and it is because it's small it's quite easy to do not having to worry about making it too thick and then it's kind of where it all goes wrong Honestly, I feel like two sides of eyeliner to cooperate and do the same thing is literally just, like, impossible. But I'm okay, I can work with this. They're, they're not the most ideal, but they're also not the worst, which is, I think, when it comes to eyeliner, as long as they're not the worst, you've basically gone to a winner. So for lashes, I'm going to use these ones that I got from Sassy Lashes. They're basically, like, on a... They're really interesting shape, actually. The lashes all go in, like, a diagonal. So you can see here. Um, oh, I really love them. They give a really nice sort of like wispy cat eye look. For foundation today, I'm going to use the Morphe. So this is the filter foundation. It's their new one, filter effect foundation. This is in the shade number medium 14. I actually just started use this for the first time yesterday and I really love the finish of it. It's a really medium coverage, but it's super glowy. It leaves your skin like looking quite like like real skin i don't know i just really like it um so i'm gonna use that so one of the other questions that came up a lot um was about by the way i'm just gonna put this on with a brush first this is the morphe e63 brush so it was basically about like why do you and joe rent in london like how come you've not bought somewhere yet you know renting feels like a waste blah 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 honestly couldn't agree with you more renting is a waste of money and you know i don't want I don't want to be renting but I have touched on this before um, and basically explained that I was going to buy a house um, sort of at the end of this year and that was sort of where Joe and I were going to live and then Joe and I had a bit of a heart to heart and he just said that he didn't want to he didn't want our home to be sort of my home if that makes sense so like he wanted to equally buy it with me so that he felt like it was ours and not that he was living in my house which I completely understand um but obviously with that being said 
you know, Joe just wanted a little bit more time to save some extra money, um, you know, and all that sort of stuff. So that's that's basically the reason as to why we we why we rent and why we haven't actually bought. Because you know, in, in relationships, you have to make compromises, and that's just one of the compromises that we've made. Is that for the meantime, we're just rent in London. Plus, also, funnily enough, I thought that I was going to want to buy a house in London, and this was where I was going to want to live. But I think actually, when it does come time to buy, I think we will buy outside of London just because you get way more for your money. Honestly, like, if you've ever looked at the housing prices in London and what you can actually get for your money, it's ridiculous. Like, there's just, it would be silly because the amount that we want to spend on a house, what we could get in London compared to what we could get outside of London, I mean, the, the difference is just crazy. So, yeah, with that being said, I think I might buy, like, um, an investment property in London. So maybe get, like, a little sort of one-bed or two-bedroom flat that I just purely rent out. Because I think it's just so nice to have a... I would love to, obviously, have a property in London, and I think that is something that I will do. But, um, yeah, I don't think the house that we actually end up buying won't be in London. But we're really... And that's the thing, like, the lovely thing about, sort of, being able to rent in London at the moment is that we're sort of living our best London life. I mean, obviously, it's locked down, so that's not ideal. But... You know, we, we love the lifestyle that we've got here. Um, you know, all of our friends live so close by. Um, you know, just that sort of life is really just great fun. So, you know, when you're, while you're young, why not, you know? Renting is slightly painful, but in the grand scheme of things, it's not forever and we're having a great time. So <laughs> that's sort of the main thing. How amazing is the finish of this foundation? I honestly love it, it's so nice. So another question that was coming up quite a lot, which was an interesting one, um, was sort of like, you know, you and Joe seem like such a like, happy couple. Have you ever had bad experiences in relationships like before or like what your ex is like? Have you ever been in a toxic relationship? Um, oh God, honestly, I would need more than just this video to explain <laughs> some of my past experiences. But yes, I have definitely been in a very toxic relationship. All I can say is think Spencer Pratt from The Hills that sort of toxic, really manipulative, um, just playing me, you know, sleeping around with so many other girls behind my back, making me feel so insecure, jealous, just the worst kind of version of myself, um, which now I'm out of that relationship, I can see so clearly what was so wrong with it, but when you're in that sort of relationship, honestly, I thought the sun, the moon and the stars shined out of his asshole, and... I can tell you now, they definitely bloody didn't. Um, I actually did a video ages ago, which was called like, um, No Fuck Boys Allowed, I think was the title of the video. I'll find it and I'll link it below. It's really old. And I did it while I was sort of in the middle of this relationship or coming out the other side of it. And um, yeah, it's just sort of a bit of an advice video if you're sort of stuck in a relationship which maybe you don't feel 100% happy in, maybe give it a watch. And um, yeah, hopefully it might help you, but I can do more of a video on like relationships and things that I've learned if you want one, um, especially if I want to go more in depth about it. Um, but I just want to say on that subject, one thing to take anything away from just this one video is that relationships should make you feel nothing but good. Literally, this person should add value to your life and make you a better version of yourself. And if that's not the case, then there's something not right there. One other bit of advice, if it's meant to be, it will be easy. That's it summed up. Um, anyway, so, without getting too deep. So for concealer, I'm gonna use the Tarte Shape Tape again, but this is in the um, light sand color. I thought I might try that, I feel like we're calling it like TikTok concealer. So it's that sort of like how to do a, how to do a facelift with concealer. Um, I haven't actually tried it yet, so why not just give it a whirl? So I'm gonna put some concealer here. I'm gonna try and remember where they put it now. I think it's there. I think we go up along this bit, like that. Then I'm gonna put a little bit here, and then here. Okay, I think that's where we're gonna put it. I'm gonna blend it out. I'll do one side and then the other, because I think that's the best way to sort of see see the difference. It's a bit of an awkward spot to put concealer though. It's quite high up. Maybe I've ruined, or maybe that was the wrong place to put it, I don't know. <laughs> we'll soon find out. So um, while I while I blend this out, I'll answer some of your other questions. I did get sort of on that on that note about sort of relationships and toxic relationships, things like that. I had quite a lot of you asking me about like, do I feel jealous about you know 
Instagram and like Joe liking other girls' pictures or do you know do I check to see if Joe's liked my Instagram pictures and all that sort of stuff. Um, and all I can say is no, I honestly couldn't care less. You know, Joe doesn't, you know, I never ever 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 feel one bit worried or insecure or anything with Joe. Like he is the most amazing boyfriend. He makes me feel nothing but secure, nothing but amazing. Um, and that's how a relationship should be. Like I'm never checking to see what he's doing on Instagram or wondering who he's messaging or anything like that because there is a hundred full percent trust there. And I think that is what a relationship should be. It's not nice, is it, to like, and that's what I mean because I've been in relationships like that where someone will pick up their phone and I'm thinking, well, who are you messaging? And that's not a nice feeling. That's not what you, that's genuinely not what a relationship should be like. I am, um, that's another thing that I think is another massive red flag in a relationship because someone you're with should just be doing everything they can to make you feel secure. So, um, yeah. That's basically the answer to that is no, I never ever feel any jealousy or anything and Joe never ever makes me feel like that. We have a very mutual respect for one another and I would never make him feel insecure or feel the need to doubt me and he never does it either. So it's just just a dream really and it's how it should be. Um, okay, so I blend out that concealer but I think maybe that was too much on. I mean, it's kind of like, it's just concealed my face, I think. I also look a bit pasty. Maybe the concealer colour I used was too light for that. We'll make it work. We can make it work. It's still concealer at the end of the day. I'll um I'll make that, but I just don't I don't I'm not sure it really did the trick. But maybe I just put too much on. Let's try and put like a little bit less on this side. I always feel like I don't normally um I don't normally use concealer straight from this stick. I always put it on the back of my hand. But the videos that I've seen with people doing this, they literally use use it straight from the from the sort of concealer pot and the concealer wand. But I think I'm so far, I feel like I just stick to the way that I do my concealer. It's not blowing me away, but that might just be because I'm actually failing at doing it. <laughs> okay, I'm just going to add a little bit more of that concealer, but just to my forehead. I've just got a couple of um, spot marks that I picked, which I really shouldn't have. I regret it. And they've left mini little scars on me. I, honestly, I'm such a picker. I wish, I feel like, I wish I was one of those people that could just leave a spot alone, but I'm just not. And I'm never going to be, so I'm not going to lie to myself about it. And make myself feel like I'm going to be, because I'm not. I always feel like a nose contour when you've brought the eyeshadow up into your eyebrow really finishes it off really nicely. It's kind of like quite an important step. So I'm going to use the, this is the Makeup Revolution concealer stick thing that I love um, in the shade C12.5. And then of course I'm using my little yellow nose contour brush, which is just my favourite thing in the whole entire world. So then I'm just going to blend that out with the Huda Beauty. This is the Eyes Build and Blend brush that I always use to blend out my nose contour. It's such a good one for this. So another question that you guys asked a lot, which was kind of random, but hey, I'll, I'll answer it. Um, it was about contraception and like, do you use it, what you're on? Um, have you ever used emergency contraception? And by that, obviously, that's the morning after pill and things like that. So the answer is yes, I have definitely had an experience of having to use um, emergency contraception and morning after pills. I basically, when I was younger, this is honestly the worst thing you can do, so don't take, <laughs> don't take advice from this, but I was so bad at taking the pill. I honestly would forget so much, and then if I was on a night out or, you know, things happen. And, um, yeah, I honestly then would the next day have to be running to Super Juggle Boots to buy the, the morning after pill, but I obviously don't recommend it. And um, it wasn't exactly the most clever thing in the world. Um, I actually stopped taking the pill about five months ago now. It was just a personal decision of mine. So I've been on um, birth control literally since I was 16 years old. And I just feel like my body just really wasn't responding very well to it. It didn't make me feel great. I was suffering with really bad mood swings actually because of the pill and I tried, honestly, I had been moved onto so many different variants of it. My doctor has honestly put me on about four different ones over my like time of being on the pill. And um, yeah, I just never felt like it really ever properly agreed with my body. So I decided to come off it. I had a conversation with Joe about it and I sort of spoke to him quite openly about the fact that I didn't really want to take the pill anymore because I didn't like the idea of putting that into my body and he understood and he's been really good about it so we actually use condoms at the moment which you know I don't I don't have anything against obviously we're, we're as careful as we can be um I probably will um consider trying to find a different form of contraception you know people obviously it was talk about like the copper coil and all that sort of stuff and my sister had such a bad experience on that she actually got copper poisoning from it 
so I don't think I want that. But I know there's like the injection, there's so many other things you can do, so maybe I'll try something else, or maybe I just will stick to using condoms, I don't know, but yeah, I have definitely had to use emergency contraception in my life, that is for sure. Um, so the powder that I'm going to use to set the bottom half of my face, I'm actually going to use the Laura Mercier Translucent and Honey. This has been in my cupboard for a while. Why I've not properly used it until now, I don't know. I've just started using it this week and I'm so in love with it, like really, really like it. So I'm going to set the bottom half of my face with the Honey colour. I think it's a nice one because it's like the Translucent Powder, but it's just got a little tiny bit more colour to it. Because um, sometimes, even though, the, I mean, I this is no shade on the translucent colour because it is just the best thing ever. But I just felt like mixing it up and it's, it is such a good powder. I really, really like it. And then I'm just going to apply a little bit to my forehead. So one thing I'm still, oh, I've got powder over it. One thing I'm still completely obsessed with is the YSL powder in number two. This is the pink powder. It's just the best for under eyes. It honestly is. It's so good. Um, so another question that came up quite a lot from you guys was asking what Joe does for a job. So um, I, I feel like I have sort of said this before, but if you guys have missed it, so he owns Komodo, which is like a digital marketing and influencer agency. Um, and yeah, so he set that up a couple of years ago with some mates and it's doing so well. And yeah, I'm really, really proud of them all. It's like such an achievement to have created such an amazing brand. So he's um, the head of talent there, and he also is my manager essentially. So I'm on the Komodo uh, management like roster, and Joe's my manager. So that's why um, when you guys were asking why he was on the misguided call with me the other day in my vlog, that's why because he's basically my man. So because he's my manager, he will kind of be across across everything, and I love that sort of relationship that we have because I feel like. I really love working with people that I can really trust and who, you know, and I can't trust anyone more than I can trust Joe. So it's really nice to be able to work together and as I say, just have like full trust that he's always got my best interests at heart. Um, so yeah, it's kind of like a little dream team. I really enjoy, I really enjoy having him as my manager. So to warm my face up, I'm just gonna use some of the Laura Mercier, this is the translucent medium deep powder, which if you've seen any of my other videos, you'll know I'm obsessed with for bronzer. It's just such a lovely colour. So I'm going to use um, a slightly smaller brush today. I'm going to use the Spectrum. This is the AO4 brush. And I'm just going to focus the product a little bit more. I like when I'm doing when I'm doing a glam look, I basically like to sort of accentuate my cheekbone, but sort of more down the bottom. Just prefer doing that when it's a bit more of a glam look. So um, another question that came up quite a lot was talking about SLA and sort of like how I got it started, you know, did I have any help, am I doing it with other people, those sort of questions. So the answer to that is it was completely and utterly set up by myself, um, I didn't have any help with it, I used, you know, my my own money invested into it to get it going um, and it was, yeah, that, I think that's why it's super rewarding, that's for sure, because obviously, you know, it is something that I built myself but it does make it make it a lot harder because I am sort of, you know, running it all by myself, having to make all the decisions by myself. You know, the team is growing now, which is good. We've got, um, you know, a general manager, so sort of like an office manager of SLA. We've got a marketing girl now. Um, you know, we've, we, we are growing and um, I'm hoping sort of in the future and sort of, you know, the next year or so, we'll get more of a permanent sort of office, which will be really nice because we'll be able to actually employ more people. So we've got some designers on board now as well, which is really exciting. And I absolutely love working with them to create the ranges. So that's amazing. Um, and it takes the pressure off me a little bit because trying to do all of that and also have my sort of influencing career was starting to become a little bit tricky and I felt like SLA wasn't getting all the attention that it really needed so it's nice to have help from other people and it definitely makes it easier so um, yeah I'm super excited about the future of SLA I feel like it's only gonna grow and get bigger and I'm really excited to just see see the progression and see where it goes so I just wanted you guys to know that like you can totally start something up by yourself from scratch um, it can be done it's obviously, as I said, it's a slightly, it's a slightly more daunting way to do things, but um, it's it's really, really rewarding. It's so good. Before I move on to blusher, I'm just gonna wipe away the excess powder that I've got baking, just so I can. 
I like to put the blusher on my nose. It's my new favourite spot to put blusher, which you'll see what I mean in a second. So for blush today, I'm going to use this new, so this is the NARS Claudette collection. Um, so this is just the Claudette br brush, blah, blush, that's a mouthful to say. Um, it's this one, it's got the sort of duo colour. Oh, it's so nice, honestly. A little bit does go a long way, so you want to use it slightly sparingly. But it's such a lovely blush colour. It it's very like, it's very pink. I really like it. So yeah, so I like to basically take the blush sort of like either side of my nose. Um, just to sort of, I don't know, it's really cute. I've seen um, a few little different sort of like makeup videos that I've, I actually see a lot on Pinterest. I don't personally have TikTok, which I know sort of shocks a lot of people. I just, I've never really been interested in downloading or using it myself, but I see a lot of the TikTok videos sort of come across to Pinterest. And um, a lot of the girls who do their sort of makeup tutorials on there, they put blush sort of across their nose like this. And then, um, I don't know, I just think it looks really cute. It's like a nice little fresh way to apply some blush to your face. So for eyebrows, I'm actually going to use, this is the Anastasia Beverly Hills, this is the Brow Freeze Styling Wax. I'm honestly obsessed with this, so I'm also going to use one of their spoolies to do this. It's such an amazing brow wax thing. So I've just got some on my brush, and then I'm just going to brush it through my eyebrows. As you can see, it already just instantly makes my eyebrow hairs just stand up. And it's so good at, at keeping them in place that honestly they won't go anywhere. They'll be there all day. It's a very sort of intense brow setter. As you guys know, I'm, I am sort of still growing out my eyebrows, but I do feel like they've gotten to a place that I'm a lot happier with them, and they just seem a hell of a lot fuller, which is really good. I like to um, brush these bottom ones. Instead of brushing them up, though, I sort of brush them down um, to fill out like a space where it's a little bit more sort of sparse in my eyebrows. So while I brush through my other one, I'm just going to answer a couple more questions because we're almost at the end of the makeup. Um, so one of the other questions that came up quite a lot was people asking about like my boob job and boob job regrets and things like that. So like for in particular, like I had a question that was talking about would I ever get them removed? Um, and I honestly have no regrets from getting a boob job. It was still like, I just think it was one of the best things I ever did. Um, it made me feel so much more confident, and like I, I think my, <laughs> I think my boobs look great. Um, I actually am so pleased with them, and I don't think. I mean, I, I'm intrigued to see what you guys think, but like, I don't think my boobs look that fake. A lot of people are pretty shocked when um, I say that I've had a boob job. If they don't know, they're like, oh, I had no idea, which was basically what I wanted when it when I had a boob job in the first place. Like, I wanted it to be as natural as it possibly could look. So yeah, so because of that, I honestly, they, I, I don't even really feel like I've had a boob job. Um, they don't really ever get in the way. They're such a good size. Um, and yeah, just, just part of me now. So just to elongate the tail ends of my eyebrows, I'm gonna use the Benefit. So this is the Precisely My Brow Pencil. This is in shade number three, because um, my brows just honestly refuse to grow this way. But that's fine, because we'll fake it till we make it. If we ever make it, I'm not sure. Um, and so lastly, um, I feel like I've probably only got time for one more sort of question. It was, questions about fillers were coming up quite a lot. Um, as you guys know, I'm super open and honest about anything I've had done and will always, um, you know, be truthful. And um, I stopped having, so I know that I vlogged my experience of having facial contouring. That was probably, oh, two years ago now, I think that video was. I can't remember, um, but it's on my channel if you're interested in seeing it. But that was the last time I actually had it done. Um, I just stopped having fillers in my face. Yeah, probably what, two years ago now. And I still have a lip filler, um, but I actually want to get my bottom one. As you can see, it's slightly wonky this side and it drives me insane. It's just like been filled. It's been like this for a while now. It's probably been like it for about a year and a half and it needs to be corrected should we say um but yeah i just i i'm i have botox i have baby botox um but i just don't really feel the need to have filler anymore i feel like my face actually it was weird when i stopped having the filler i actually feel like my face looked nicer without the filler so um and also it goes without saying in the last like two years i have lost weight and i think Losing weight has made my face look a bit more like I've got more of a defined jaw. My cheekbones have come out a bit more. This is just they, these sort of things happen when you lose weight, you know. Um, so you know, I'm not against filler at all. I, you know, I used to have it all the time, but I haven't had any facial filler now for so long. And you know, if you're having it, that's great. But personally, I just feel like I actually do look better without it. 
So before I move on to highlighter, I'm just going to set my face. I'm actually using the new, this is the Benefit Professional Super Setter um, Primer. It's amazing, honestly, it's so good. It really like minimises the appearance of pores and it keeps your makeup on. It's amazing because it just does so many things in one. And it's a really nice sort of like, ugh, I'm eating that as I'm talking. It's a really nice sort of like light mist. It's not like a really heavy spray, which I like when it comes to, um, when it comes to makeup setting sprays. I prefer that sort of more of a, a nice mist. So for highlighter, I'm going to use the Back to Becca Cosmetic Champagne Pop, guys. It's back in action again. It's funny how um, when you stop using products and then you come back to them, you just realise, like, it's like a realisation of why you were so obsessed with them in the first place. It's just, honestly, this highlighter is just, it's such a nice sort of subtle highlight as well. Obviously, it's like, it's intense, but the colour of it is just so nice, honestly. I just absolutely love it. So I'm just putting a little bit on my cheeks and then I'm going to put a little tiny bit above my eyebrow and then for my um eyebrow and my nose i'm just gonna use a little this is like a small little pencil brush so i'm just gonna apply a little bit under my eyebrow on both sides and then i like to pop some in the center of my nose and then also sort of towards the end but not right at the end just to give it a nice little glow so i thought i would just go and put my sassy earrings in to end this video because why not, you know? Um, just to finish off the makeup, I did just add a little bit of mascara to my bottom lashes. And then my lip combo today is, so I'm using the MAC Strip Down Liner. I've also got on top of it the, so this is the Anastasia Beverly Hills Lipstick in Tease. And then the lip gloss over the top, which is my new favourite lip gloss. It's amazing. This is the Morphe Shimmy, I think it's called, yeah. Morphe Shimmy Lip Gloss. As you can see, it's this beautiful sort of like orangey, peach colour. So there we go guys, that is today's makeup tutorial slash q and A. I I really hope that you guys love this makeup look for one and also enjoyed getting to know me a little bit better. Give the video a thumbs up if you have enjoyed this one. I will of course link everything that I used below with the shade names and all that sort of stuff. Um, but thank you all so much for watching and I will see you all in my next video. Bye guys.